Oh, the box, the box, the litter box. I can't stand the box. I can't stand my cat. Ah, come on, folks. Something can be done about it if you get catified. So let's go. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to yet another installment of your cat daddy's out of the box. And this is brought to us by the good folks over at Litter Genie. Thanks, guys. Now, last time we were talking about plan A when it came to litter box problems. Now, first we ruled out any veterinary problems. Anything happens, do not pass go, do not collect $200, get to the vet, have all the tests done. We started talking about the very basics of the behavioral part of this thing, and that was just, hey, more boxes bring down the temperature in the house. Anyway, go back and watch it again. The link is right up there. So today what I want to talk about, it's a very simple tenet of detectivism. You're a detective. You walk into somebody's house, just the facts, ma'am. I am not emotionally connected to this story whatsoever. Journalist, same thing. They walk into sometimes the most emotionally high stakes things and they go, yeah, I'm here to write a story. Okay, your cat peed in the house. I know it's not a great thing. Clean it up, forgive, move on. And then we back up and we start to journal what's going on. When did your cat first pee or poop outside the box for the first time. When did that happen? Now, take a look around your home. What happened to you? And it could be as simple as you had a roommate and they left. You have a new roommate. You went through a traumatic thing, perhaps a separation or a divorce, something not so traumatic. A baby was born or somebody new came into the home or you added an animal. You lost your job. You got a job. You're spending less time at home. Something must have triggered this pee quake in the house. If you can't think of anything, well then it's time to start getting a little micro journaly. So what you need to do, the pee happened. Okay, now we know around what time it happened and we know where it is. Okay, we got the when and we got the where. Getting the why is the tricky part. So we have to think what happened during this particular day that was different from other days. And if you're lucky enough to know around the exact time that it happened, back it up an hour and go, now what could have happened to make your cat's temperature rise? Think about it in terms of you. Let's say for no apparent reason, you get into a fight with your spouse. It was a nothing. It was about dinner. Your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, they made a dinner. You should know that I hate Brussels sprouts. I mean, how long have we been together? And you don't know I hate Brussels sprouts? I can't stand them. You know what? I gotta go cool down. I gotta go take a walk because you are driving me crazy. That can happen over Brussels sprouts. P can happen over, well, not Brussels sprouts, I don't know, but it can happen because of something like that. So it's time for you to back up and say, what caused this irrational reaction? Based on years of working with cats and humans for that matter, nothing is random patterns emerge. In fact, there have been a bunch of episodes of My Cat From Hell where I had folks put X's down on the floor with painter's tape. Every time a cat peed, you put an X on the ground. That's great detectivism right there because it shows you exactly where the stress was causing your cat to act out. Let's say your cat, unfortunately, is peeing or pooping outside the box every day. An X goes down on the floor. And I'm telling you, when you back up after that week, you're looking at X's on the ground. The anti-treasure map is what I call it. Wait Wait a minute, this anti-treasure map is leading to the anti-treasure. And in fact, one time I was doing the X marks the spot with a client and it turned out that the cat was peeing a perfect circle around her toddler's toys. That should tell you something about your cat's relationship to the toddler, right? Or let's say that it was a perfect circle around the litter box. That could be anything from, you know, it hurts for me to go to the litter box, or I can't deal with the dog sticking his snout in a box every time I try to poop, so I'm building a moat around my litter box. You see, there are ways, folks, there are ways. Now, one more point about the detectivism. I wanna talk about perimeter marking. Your cat is peeing basically around the edges of the house. I'm building a moat to protect my castle. Usually what that tells me is there's something going on outside the house, what I call barbarians at the gate. Take a look outside your home. Do you have neighborhood cats who are coming into your yard? Are you feeding feral cats? If so, you want to pull that back around your cat's safety zone. Doing all this, journaling, 
doing the anti-treasure map, checking out perimeter marking and what's going on outside the home. Is the problem from within or from without? These are basic detectivism points that will bring you out of that place where you were going, my cat hates me. My cat hates me, my cat hates my kids, my cat hates my husband, my wife, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my roommate, the weather, my aunt, my uncle, whatever. It's all probably ridiculous and it all increases your temperature. The key is bring down the temperature in the house. All right, hopefully that helped you guys. Next time, we're gonna talk a little bit about the thing you hate, which is what you're doing wrong with your litter box. Sorry, gotta break it to you. In the meantime, I want to once again thank the guys at Litter Genie for sponsoring Cat Mojo and Out of the Box. Do yourself a favor, get yourself a Litter Genie, man. I got six in the house for good reason. All right, until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you. Mwah. Love you guys. You're a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm just misunderstood. Meow.